So we can see on the right hand corner here, the tip here, you can see that there's definitely some growth. Yes, people, what's good? Welcome back to the channel, guys. So I want to answer a couple of questions from you guys about how I've seen success with this tank. Right, guys, so this tank, I saw this tank when I came off holiday. I ripped everything out. New Aquascape, new corals on there in August of 2022, right? So I have um, a couple of years experience when it comes to reefing. And I'll tell you what, guys, I have messed up monumentally in the past while learning how to keep corals and fish. I mean, the first um, aquarium I had, um, it took me 10 weeks to cycle my tank. And when I put my clownfish in there, it died from, um, from ick. Oh, or well, broken out of one of them, but it died within like three days after putting him in there and I was devastated. Yeah, and I wanted to leave, but someone said to me, hang in there, it's a learning curve, you will know better for next time. Okay, so how I've seen success within this particular tank. So once I put the rock work in and everything else, um, I mean, the tank had beneficial bacteria in there already. All I did was I topped up with um, Dr. Tim's to ensure that, you know, there was some form of um, bacteria there to process the, the waste, you know, the nitrite, nitrate, all of that, all of that good stuff. For my um, alkalinity, I ensure I, uh, basically do not chase numbers i pick a range and i try my best to stick within that range so my range has always been for well not always been for the majority of me keeping reef tanks uh, around 8.4 to about or 8.5 to about 9 i try to keep it around there and i realize that's a sweet spot for the way i reef um, within um, this particular system um, it has gone down to about seven before and that's when i was literally starting off dosing ati so the way I keep my alkalinity between 8.5 and 9, I basically um, use my trident and my trident test, uh, test my water at midnight, um, 6 in the morning, um, midday and then midnight again. So four times within a 24 hour period and it will tell me what my alkalinity is. Now if you don't have something like an ATI, you have another way of monitoring or testing your system um, via an app. Yeah, good thing to have, very beneficial. If you're doing it manually, I would say maybe start maybe eight in the morning and maybe six in the afternoon just to see where your alkalinity sits. And then you can do adjustments from there. Okay, so with my calcium, I always try to pick a range as well, yeah? So um, I've picked maybe around maybe 440, 470. I like staying within that range. At certain times, my calcium will go up to 500. When I realized that because of, you know, things like my trident, I just stopped those of calcium. Let it drop for a little bit, um, ensure that, you know, everything's okay. When it's dropped to around maybe 430, start dosing again because sometimes the tank just stalls for some unknown reason it could be a nutrient issue it could be a light issue it could be anything but just ensure that you are testing your parameters as much as you can to ensure that you stay within your ranges no particular number but a range now we can talk about lighting as well so lighting is a very in-depth topic and yeah it's something that i did cover uh on one of my videos i think it was the it last video for last year the first one for this year one of, one of them and it's all about par so par is just um a, a number at which you you check the amount of radiation going to the corals basically from your light fixture within the spectrums okay so if you are running ATI or so you are in a AI or Ecotech, whatever lights you're running, I would strongly advise that you test your path and do research on the coral that you're keeping. So if you have an SPS coral and it does well in, let's say, 450 par, you calibrate your lights to give that amount of par or within that range for that coral. Right, guys, so I have the um, the original TMC sump on here. So on the left-hand side, that's the uh, ATO chamber. So I've got RDI water in there and a DND um, ATO, um, well, ATO setup on there. Simple as, just one sensor at the back there. If you can see it blinking away, and don't worry about the bubbles, it's not affecting it at all. Uh, and all that's allowing me to do is just, you know, dose, um, dose, but uh, top up my uh, evaporated water. So simple as that, um, does the trick, uh, no issues with that. And you guys are probably wondering why the hell do I have um, an air stone in there? I just hate to see ag um, water that's not agitated. And I was getting this film, this bacterial film on there, and I've always done it with all my systems, just uh, agitating the water in this chamber here. It's not affecting, it's not creating any micro bubbles. It's fine, yeah? Um, on the, uh, moving on to that, uh, I do have the um, Reef Octopus um, S110, S10, skimmer quite small small footprint there and the reason i got that there's not much space in this sun basically um and i do um, run carbon as well yeah um yeah just to ensure my water clarity is kept within you know a good good level so ensure that the par can get to get to the corals without any issues um, i'm rocking a, a s2 return pump from ecotech very good products um my apex probes are right here 
I do need to buy a new conductivity probe because I broke that one and it's showing zero zero. So I do check my, my conductivity with the Hana pen. Uh, the doser is the DND uh, Pro doser. Um, and yeah, I just do everything via an app and just tie everything off to ensure that you know, everything's just um, as tidy as possible when you're looking at the system. I do, I am dosing, um, I'm, I'm feeding, sorry, uh, flakes, mice's flake. And that's what I'm uh, feeding currently. Um, the LPS foods for my LPS corals. And I do um, spread a, a bit of reefroids um, every now and again in there about three times a week to ensure that um, the tank is dirty, dirty enough so the PO4 can build and the, the corals can benefit. So yeah, that is my, my sump for the system, guys. Nothing special. Um, I try to keep it as clean and tidy as possible. And yeah, another thing I ensure that I have here and it's very random i do have random flow in my reef tank now I, i'm rocking uh two mp10s um for the side by side kind of flow and they are on, on gyre mode um and the thing about the mp10s they do have a really broad kind of flow pattern to them and it do it does um go to all the corals um and just ensure that you are keeping an eye on where that flow is going because certain corals may be blasted certain corals may not be receiving flow and as the corals grow you will have to reposition those um your circulation pumps no doubt about it i've realized that so as this aquascape fills out i will be either changing the positions of the mp10s or getting myself some gyres that go left and right so it has a like a broader flow for the whole aquascape also i do have an, a nero free at the back there to give like a, a diagonal flow across the top yeah, to the other side here and um, to ensure uh, you know there's just random flow so you can see it goes really quiet for the um, surface agitation um, for the tank and once the the gyre mode kicks in you can see uh, all the agitation or the the surface um, the chaos that's created by these pumps which the corals really benefit from so flow is a very very important thing to have for your reef tank guys and i've seen so much benefit and the corals do love it and you would know when the corals are happy yeah once that flow is really tuned in and magnesium as well um i don't really pay too much attention to magnesium the only thing i would say about magnesium and, and this setup is that i always try to keep it around 1400 and above um, anything below 1500 is preferable um, all I know is um, magnesium helps um, alkalinity and calcium um, basically stay in solution within within the aquarium another important parameter that I try to keep as best as I can is my temperature guys so um, I do run the apex and the apex helps me to um, monitor and maintain my temperature so once my um, um, probe detects my temperature for the tank is 25 point two degrees it will turn on my heater when it gets to about um, 26.1 it will turn it off uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't say that environmental factors doesn't affect um, my temperature especially during summer um, I do have an AC to help um, regulate the temperature in this room because I'm in the front room um, and this this summer 2023 I will be getting some um, fans to put on it I'll be getting a long D&D um, bar at the top there's about four fans or six fans to put on here to help cool down this aquarium so yeah guys, in a nutshell, that's what I do. I just ensure that my alkalinity, calcium, uh, magnesium are kept within the correct ranges or the ranges I want to maintain. Dose enough to keep it within those ranges. Yeah, and that goes for my pH as well. I ensure that um, my windows are open and the CO2 scrub is working as best as it can to ensure that um, 8.2, 8.3 number is reached by peak photosynthesis period. And also with the nutrients as well, guys pick a range of the nutrients right don't chase numbers so i know that i want to keep my nutrients between eight point i'm sorry um 0 0.03 to about 0 0.06 uh, and i'll just feed accordingly if i realize that um there's issues feed less um if i realize that it's too long feed more right guys this is the for hd quality reefing guys i hope these tips as to you know how i achieve success within um this reefing hobby and maintaining sps corals does help guys um if you haven't done so yet make sure you like subscribe uh, and yeah, guys, talk to me in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. See you next time.